There's yet another way of working with a multi setup in Omnisphere, and it's called Live Mode. We get to it from the multi tab over here by pressing Live, and we can turn it on with that button, and you'll see it displayed there. As with Stack Mode, when it's on, you'll see it displayed there. Now, Live Mode is used to switch between patches and or layer patches all in real time. It's a live performance mode, but you can also record your performance switching and layering patches in real time. And like stack mode, all of the parts respond to a single MIDI channel, except when we're in the dual mode, which I'll get to in a minute. But they respond to a single MIDI channel, so despite how you have them channelized here, it's overridden when live mode is on. Now you can easily switch between the parts using the mouse, and that's simple enough. Right now I have this selected. So just like that is easy. And one of the nice advantages of doing this is you can sustain a note and switch parts and your note will remain sustained. So that's one way of doing it. The other way is with MIDI CC messages. And what we can do is right click on here and we can MIDI CC learn. And I'm gonna do that and press a button on my controller. And I've just learned it. And we can show the learns by using the show menu. I'm gonna go show MIDI CCs and there's what I just learned there. And I'm gonna right click here, go MIDI CC learn and learn another one. And let's do one more. I'm gonna right click there. And now I can press those buttons and switch between the parts. And you'll notice that as I press once, it's on, press again and it's off. And I can layer parts like that. And the behavior of what happens when you press a CC button is determined in the zoom here. And we have MIDI CC mode, we have latch, which will leave it on like that until you press it again. And we also have touch mode, which means that it's only on when you press it. And when you press another one, it'll automatically turn the previous one off. Let's look at how that works. So you can only have one on at a time. And then we have switch mode over here, which means that a value of zero deselects it and a value of 127 selects it. So different modes that you can work in. I'm gonna leave it in touch for the moment. Now we can display the CCs there. We can display the part number there and we can reorder these. And when we reorder them, the MIDI CC learns are tied to the slot, not to the patch. So we can reorder these as we want, but these CC assignments remain with the slot. And reordering them here does not change the order in the mixer. Everything is as I originally created it. Now we can also use MIDI notes to select the different parts. So for example, I'm gonna right click here and I'm gonna go MIDI note learn. I'm gonna hit a note. And I'm going to do another one here, MIDI note learn. And another one here, let's do this one for a change. So now I can press those notes and you can see me hitting them on the keyboard here. And they'll call up the sounds like that. So we can also use program change numbers. I'm not going to get into that now, but we can use them as well. And we can display whichever mode we want over here. Now we also have mixer controls that we can access directly from live mode. When I press this button, we can actually call up the patch browser and change any sounds that we want. There we go. Let's go back to multi. Change any of the sounds that we want in any of the slots just by clicking that. And we can also adjust the part level and we have mute and solo status there. Now in dual mode over here, the idea is that we're adding a second MIDI channel to live mode, and it's designed for using with two MIDI controllers. It divides it into eight parts. We have two rows here, they're different colors, this row and this row. And the idea is that each row responds to a different MIDI channel, and we can assign that in the zoom. I'll look at it in more detail in a moment in the zoom, but that's dual mode where these four respond to one channel and these four respond to another. Now we also have latch and trigger modes, and I'm not gonna go over them again. We looked at it in the last video, but each part we can assign to be triggered a next beat, next bar, or next 16th, and we can enable or disable latch for each part.
Now we also have previous next arrows. That's another way of switching between the parts using a mouse. And again, we can hold notes and they'll sustain if we sustain them as we're switching. So a nice way to work like that. Now let's look at the zoom settings in a bit more detail. We have the display here, same thing that we have in the regular view. We can turn on or off if we want the parts to respond to control change messages, program change messages, or note messages individually. We can also enable stack mode note regions here so that we can take advantage of the layers and splits that are set up in stack mode when that's on. So we set which MIDI channel we want live mode to respond to here, and we can set it uniquely or to any. And when we're in dual mode, this mirrors all the controls for the two different parts. So the idea is that we would set one channel here and a different channel there. But out of dual mode, let's go back to the regular controls. We have the mouse select mode that we can alternate between touch and latch. And I had it in touch just now when I was showing it to you. And MIDI CC mode, we have touch, latch, or switch, which we looked at. And key select mode also, we can use any of those three select modes. Now we can also control some of the display settings. The note display, we can have C3 as note 60 or C4, depending how you like to work. And if you're working with program change messages, there are different formats for how program changes are used on different hardware devices. So you can switch between them there. So that's live mode, and I'll see you for more in the next video.